My name is uh, Dr. Sloan Guy. I'm the Chief of Cardiovascular Surgery at Temple University Hospital. I've performed thousands of cardiac procedures of varying types. About half of those have been valve procedures. Most procedures performed in the U.S. are bypass surgeries. I do them, but I do more valve surgery than bypass surgery. So my original interest in cardiac surgery began with my mentor, starting with Dr. Bill Frist at Vanderbilt University. The types of procedures they do were incredibly interesting and the technical challenges were something that attracted me. I noticed that these guys were some of the best overall doctors in the hospital. If you're on a deserted island and you can only have one kind of doctor, you want that guy to be a heart surgeon. Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. I'm here with Dr. Sloan Guy. We're answering your questions that were posted at the website. This question, Dr. Guy, comes in from Ken, and Ken writes, Hi Adam, after being diagnosed with mitral valve prolapse in 1995, I now need surgery to fix the valve. During my research, I've come across robotic valve surgery. The question is, is this procedure safe compared to a sternotomy? Absolutely, yes. You know, there are many different ways to do mitral valve surgery, ranging from a, a full sternotomy or cracking of the chest, to so-called mini thoracotomies where you make uh, small incisions under the right breast. The real advantage, in my opinion, of the robot is it allows you to make probably the smallest possible incisions to accomplish a, a mitral valve repair. Um, in my practice, my largest incision for a robotic mitral valve repair is 15 millimeters. There's no way you could do the operation through that size incision without the robot. But the robot's just an instrument. The surgeon controls it the difference between that and standard instruments is its range of motion, and that allows you to essentially crawl into the patient's left atrium inside their heart with the camera, with the instruments, and have the same range of motion as you would have with your own hands. That's the real advantage, is the small incisions and the ease of use of the equipment. Can you tell me what are the benefits and expected outcomes of robotic mitral valve repair surgery? So the greatest benefit is that the incision sizes are incredibly small, we don't do any rib spreading, which is what causes a lot of the pain from the mini thoracotomy or port access procedures. We don't split the sternum, which causes a lot of pain. So the pain is clearly less. Our length of stays are less. Our expected length of stay after this op operation in a healthy person would be about three days. And I think the greatest benefit is actually the period of time after the patient's discharged to when they would have healed from a standard operation. They tend to recover more quickly. If you want to play golf a week after surgery, this is really the only option. So Dr. Guy, can you tell us what your experience in terms of outcomes and repair rate is for someone with mitral valve prolapse? With mitral valve prolapse or myxomatous prolapse of the mitral valve, the repair rate is and should be near 100%. Almost all those patients can be repaired. If the amount of prolapse is complex, they really need to be treated at what we would call a reference center or a center of excellence that focuses on it and does a lot of them. No patient with myxomatous disease should get anything but a repair by and large. I'm very much a believer in empowering patients and the, I think the internet has gone a long way to doing that. But I think that patients need to become familiar with all the options. One of the things I tell all my patients is that there's about 10 ways to fix your mitral valve. I've done all 10 and I could introduce you to a surgeon who I would trust with my own family that does it each of those 10 ways. I believe our way is better because we make the smallest incisions. Don't simply take a referral from your cardiologist and go sign up. Spend the time to learn about the procedures, go on the internet, even seek second opinions before you decide who to go to because that's a very, very important decision. 